Welcome everyone to the Jump In series. I'm so excited about this series because it's simple and we want to all learn together and grow together. And titling it. Is your God too small? Whoa! Is my God too small? It's a great question to ask. Jesus said that the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. We know that this is a very important commandment because it is the key to all of our lives. When the church loves God, when the Christian is passionate, passionate about God, you know, you might be in an unchristian situation. You might, your family members might not be saved. Or the people in your office, your best friends that you hang out with may not be saved. But let me tell you, that when you are passionately in love with God, it releases a ton of freedom and blessing upon our earth, upon our situation. The church will never love one another successfully. We can talk about relationships, we can talk about what we need to do for each other, but we will never successfully do that, or even for that matter, to love the non-Christian, love the world, unless we first love God. So. In my opinion, the greatest danger facing the church today is not from outside the church. It is from within. It is not from social media or, or, or humanistic teaching or false doctrines or what the devil can throw at us. Nothing can defeat us. For it says in 1 John chapter 4 verse 4, for greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. But it is our lack of the love of God. That is the danger. So we might be obedient, but not coupled with passion. Come on. We, we, we might be uh, disciplined, uh, but it's not coupled with passion. It's got to be coupled with a passionate heart. Let me read you some scripture. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death. Wow. Jealousy, godly jealousy, zealousness, come on, is as fierce as the grave. The very flame of God. Wow. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If a man offered for love all the wealth of his house, he would utterly despise it. Jesus said in John chapter 8 verse 32, You shall know the truth, right? And the truth will make you free. We long to be free emotionally, spiritually. Our world longs to, to be free. They're talking about freedom all the time. But until we know the truth, so what truth would make you free? What truth will set you free? Number one, who is God to you? I mean personally, who is God to you? Because many of us have ideas about God that are incorrect. What kind of personality does he have? What is God like to you? And so, because our ideas of God have developed, well, whether we admit it or not, from our human relationships with earthly authorities, and if they are distorted, then our ideas of God are distorted. That's why we need to be born again of the Holy Spirit. When you are born again, the Spirit of God comes into your heart and He is the Spirit of truth and He will reveal all truth. See, if we have an inadequate, distorted idea of God's heart, let me, let me tell you, it can pose a huge problem of your progressing in your walk with God. If our private thoughts are thwarted and twisted about God, why is He holding out on me? Why did He let that happen? And we get angry with God and we sulk. And the devil takes an advantage of that. Our entire spiritual future 
is related to how we answer these questions in the secrecy of your heart. Outside we can be cool, we can praise God, but inaccurate and negative feelings of God will impact us for sure. For instance, if you're a sincere believer and you stumble and fall badly, and we all do, and your heart is broken and you cry out to God, how do you feel that God feels right at that moment for you? So you have to answer this very important question. When a person makes a tragic mistake and he's repentant and he's sorry and he's heartbroken, what is his picture of God at that point? Important truth to know that will set you free. And that's what we hope to answer in this Bible study. The second truth that we must need to know in order to be free is who are we to God? Now both these truths are vital in living a full and complete life. No matter what your emotions might be, God can heal and remove scars that have been there. And in its place, He doesn't just remove it, He heals it and He ignites a holy fire, a passionate affection for a deeper knowledge of Jesus Christ and deeper understanding of His excellency, of His perfection. Yes, His perfection. And we'll study about these things. And a passion for the Lord. A revelation of the true knowledge of our King will rebuild us. And that is our theme. We want to see our elderly being rebuilt with their passion and not fade away. That they will renew and rebuild and rediscover their first love. The elderly, it needs to start with you. We pray that our youth will be rebuilt in the fire of God. Many have lost that fire during this time. And the coldness of it. And the pull of the world. And the enticement of things that are around us. We pray that our youth will be rebuilt. As God wants them to be. And we pray that our children will be rebuilt as godly children. Kids will always be kids. But we pray that in our teaching, in our Sunday school, in our Bible study, even in their homes, that they will rebuild the passion of God. And so our prayer is, Lord, give us a fresh revelation of the true knowledge of God. Rebuild our passion in our older ones, our precious older ones. Flame the fire of our younger ones who are so dear to us and a passion not for the world or the things of the world but for the things of the kingdom of God and for our precious children as well. Oh God, we pray that they will have a fresh childlike revelation of the true king. So I'm going to pose to you four questions. Question number one, who is God? I mean, honestly, answer that. What has he done? Question number two. What has he done? Question number three. What will we receive? Now or later? Number four. What should we do? As you begin to share and break into your groups, I just pray that you will be honest and open to each other and honest and open to God. That you will know Him in a personal way during this Bible study series. And that we will become passionate people for God. How big is your God? Is your God too small? Let's continue this study. God bless you as you break into your different rooms.